right? Here's John Paul II. He's going to say like, the temptation is to loneliness, but all, but the invitation is to solitude. Like man, after all is said and done, there is a place in our hearts where we're actually made for this 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 kind of um, this solitude with the Lord. This, it doesn't have to be isolation and loneliness where I'm by myself, but I'm in solitude with the Lord that like when everything earthly has, has kind of, has, has kind of, um, you know, maybe quieted down. The Lord reminds me that in this solitude with him, that I made for him alone. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos, and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. hey I'm Father Mark Mary. <laughs> no, usually, you lying. You lying. I'm Father Innocent. You real? Yeah, why oh, not? Is, we're all, hey. Yeah. Oh, homie's looking at his schedule over there. You're Bro, still... I, I thought we had some space. You, you went we, for we it. We all did the click, click, click. Mm-hmm. Ready, ready, okay, ready. Okay, we're clicked. <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? <laughs> I am. Uh, can I finish checking my, my schedule? <laughs> yeah, you can. It's yeah, part of the bring, fun of it. Bring Just, us into that. What's going on? What are we looking for? This is the podcast. So this is my life. Really my life. So right before this, Brother Angelo came in. Brother Angelo is our maintenance guy at the Friary. <clears throat> and he gave me a date for one of the contractors to come look at the bathroom. And I got anxious about it. And so I was looking at the calendar. I didn't know you were going to start. And that's what happened. Did so it work? Does did the it, date did work? work? I the don't know. The people of God want to know. Let's just check it out. <laughs> While he's doing that... Um, <laughs> You want to talk, shout out your? your <laughs> oh, we're doing mugs first. Go shout out your mug. Cool. I would love to tell my friends at Loris. Hello, Focus Missionaries at Loris. I know Morgan well. Lucy, Christian, and Josh. And I went to Loris College. Everybody, and we have this cool mug they sent. So I'm really happy. About I that. like that mug. Yeah. That's really Thank cool. you for singing a masculine mug. What is it that you, you like about mean? the mug? I like the black. I like the. The rest of it being kind of like a, a t- darker color. I like the the cork. I do kind of like. like I do kind of. I like the. I like the cork at the bottom. I think. So our, hello to our friends at Loris College. I need to make a public <laughs> apology. They invite me often, almost every year to go oh, back. You're so it. popular. Well, I'm actually not popular. I went to college there, um, and I'm just sorry I haven't been able to work it out. So, but anyway, Morgan, thank you for your persistence and perseverance. Did it work? It works. Um. Oh, now we're back to the schedule. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it works. Um, so I feel better about it. So thanks for allowing me to do that in real time. We can get our bathrooms fixed. It, it was our my my many hats kind of just colliding, and I really want to be present to this podcast. But that local servant matter just kind of arose. I'm going to do this well, so nobody get nervous. But during there's a number of things going on around Holy Week, mm-hmm. which I know was a while ago at this point, where it made me very proud of you guys in our generation i was interesting i was very moved i think father innocent gave the holy or the holy thursday homily and totally rocked it right owned it yeah killed it i was like killed it it was like this guy's a and you had gotten back from a week away you flew in just to make he was sick you just did the whole thing in nebraska Yeah. yeah What did you do in Nebraska? Yeah. Are you allowed to talk about that? We gave a parish mission in Nebraska. And then what else did you do? And then we did a, I did a retreat at the retreat house. And but then what else did you do? <laughs> the humbling thing was that I was really grateful for was I spent some time doing a day recollection for all the diocesan priests with di- the Diocese of Lincoln. And? And the cr- preached the chrism mass. At our home diocese. Yeah. It was really humbling. And I was just grateful for the bishop to ask me and the priest. I know there's some priests who listen, so it was just an incredible gift to be with the guys. Just blessing them and that's like grown up stuff. I felt like it was grown up stuff. I mean, there was like 150 priests, three bishops, and I only say that because I felt I told them I said I just feel like a poor Franciscan. I'm a son of the diocese, and I really just can stand up here with gratitude and humility, but also just deep desire to bless them and the gift of their priesthood. So it was really humbling, and I was there's ton of grace. Like I just felt like the Lord was just loving them a lot. So it was beautiful to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, And then just you just like whenever you just, there's this thing, all of our doors have like little windows on them, you know, when you're meeting people and you just like walk around this friary and you see Father Angelo's just (coughs) doing his thing with, I don't know what you would call it, (laughs) just praying with people and getting them healed Mm -hmm. and rocking them. And it's just like all over the place. And then without going into detail, something happened with Father PT where the guys really just made me very grateful and moved. So there's good things happening. I don't know about good things, but there are things <laughs> happening. 
<laughs> which is a nice segue into one other thing. Mm -hmm. We're not we're not old technically, but we're not we're yeah. definitely not young anymore. Right. We all again, we all kind of had birthdays. I had mine just about the time I was at a college and college students now <clears throat> there's a lot of them born in the 2000s. Mhm. Mm and they're just they were just so because like now like college students who I knew like ten years ago are still like moved on like they're old <coughs> to college students now. And it's like man, we just we grew up. So right, like a freshman would be two thousand four, born. That's crazy. Then, or two thousand three ish. So whatever, go back eighteen, two thousand yeah, yeah two thousand four, maybe some two thousand fives. Graduating, bro. We were school. out of high school. Graduating high school at that point, you know. That brings with it grown up stuff, I guess, huh? Yeah, grown up stuff. <laughs> hey, can like, I just say something about Father Mark Mary? So, grain hair. So, we had talked about it on this podcast, but we had such a strong Lent finish, man. Like Costa Rica parish mission. So, you took the Poshans by yourself with the guys. I mean, you had TPs, but like you were your father to them. Sure. And then, and then also, I mean, I just got to say this, but you, you change all your plans around to take him. You were like the one that took care of me, my surgery. So it's like awesome. Like you can be in Costa Rica or you can be with like a home with a brother, taking care of him, taking him to the hospital like 5 a.m. And just brotherhood is just, just, just rocking it. So I was grateful. Let's just keep Thanks, honoring man. each other. This is kind of like Easter, huh? Just like the, the Lord's shown up, his risen life, just blessing all of us. Huh? You would honor me, but not touching me. <laughs> um. It's funny. I, when I sit yeah. on that side with you, or no, but you're, you're okay with physical touch. I am a touch, physical touch. But just, I have to the like inch the touched you. <laughs> the can, right person. Can you grab my elbow? There Thanks. <laughs> no, but Father Mark Mary has been making concrete choices for fraternity. He did during the retreat. That's Came right. Out, play basketball. And yeah. so, yeah. Just a good Trying, man. you know, it's a good bit. Sweet. I'm learning from you guys. That rough and, and gruff exterior isn't <laughs> all that's there. Rough and gruff. <laughs> There's actually a soft little heart in there. A little guy. Toast and marshmallow. <laughs> um, and also, I think it's like a safe thing because we were, a number of us, Father Angelus accepted, was on oh. Fun Uncle. We were all in the community <laughs> retreat together and like. Yeah, don't worry. I'll just sorry, stay buddy. back. Don't worry. Father Conrad, Father Malky, Father Isaiah, Father Elijah, Father whoever, Brother, whoever, brother Colby. Brother. There, it's just like. There's a lot of power in that place. You know what I mean? There's some dudes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, I was just like taking it in, which I guess I can say this. I don't think it's a weird thing to say, but I think that's like, that is a work of grace in my life. And maybe one of the gifts of being moved by the brothers and that was happening on the retreat. So, um, and in just general, fair enough. Fair enough. That's sweet. And we like you too, Father Angelus. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want to say something about that? Him taking care of Father and all the guys? Yeah, I mean, that was kind of the fun the fun uncle, but that's a, again, with all joking aside, Father Angelus does one particular, I mean, Father Angelus, <laughs> face it, Father Angelus does a lot. Does one particular, <laughs> he does one thing. He, uh, wow. he really focuses on three days throughout the entire <laughs> no. posh one. Father Angelus does a lot, he's a mentor, but he lives just living here with the guys, but he does one formation weekend, and that formation weekend is particularly on our identity as brothers, like so fraternal life in communion with the brothers. And so there's a, it's really particular why I asked him to do that because I think he has a charism of, of living this brotherhood and in, in our identity. So he takes the guys away and, and and basically takes them through a retreat on how to live our identity as brothers and commune with one another. So that's always cool. So we set that up this year with the Easter Octave. Mm -hmm. So we were gone like a whole week. So you did some fun stuff and you guys went on a retreat and the guys were just really, really moved by it. But just a lot of yeah, it was really beautiful good. stuff going on there. Father Mark Mary asked me when I got back, was like, was it like, uh, was it like life giving or was you tired? And I was like, it was really, I kind of humbled just the, the gift to be with him and watch some good mo like movies that have to do with fraternal life and uh, some like new movies, some old movies, and it was just kind of fun. And then just had a kind of a two and a half day silent retreat just with them. Um, fraternal life's hard too. So guys mm -hmm. were feeling it. Yeah. I asked the guys to publicly reconcile with people if they needed to. And so you saw a lot of guys on walks, kind of just yeah. rebuilding like a bridge of communion. I, I told them they didn't have to work it all out, but just to like to rebuild the bridge, you know, so it was tell, just beautiful to have. Tell them about the holy hour on Saturday night. Yeah, like I did this a couple of years ago. We've done each year, but like we'll expose blessed sacrament at the end of the night, the last night of the retreat, and each guy will go up um, and take his turn before the blessed sacrament. And then the rest of us will like bless him before, before the father and before Jesus and just honor and ask each guy, like I'll say, okay, Jesus, help us to see him as you see him. And just that, so just beautiful, just like this. And again, I always joke, like, I'm not going to be a good brother because I'm good at it. It's because the Lord is going to change me, you know? And so just trusting in like real time 
that there's new grace to see my brother again in, in a new way. So I think the guys are really moved by it. So it was just a gift to be with them. So, and we were just pounding sugar and LaCroix all week, you know, so it was great. <laughs> great. Um, one of, so there's a sense, I think it's a slightly sensitive thing, but we're going to do this whole thing. <laughs> well, I, one of the, shut up. Sorry. One, <laughs> <laughs> one of the things we've done, um, I think I've said it in the past, is that I do believe, uh, we'll use ourselves, but you can do it for other communities as well, that generally, like the friars are going are, are worse, but better than people think. Worse, better. And, and, and what I mean by that is like, <laughs> like we're just a lot more, like all the human stuff, we have it all. You know, and and even like intercommunion stuff and all that, whatever. Um, we just kind of have the normal human experience. Um, we're not angels or whatever, but um, but also I think there's something that they're like that just means that like our our fight fi- our fight for this life, our fight for relationship, our our fight for uh, the Lord. Like it's it's a real choice, and so there's like there's real yeah there's real effort and real death and real sacrifice and stuff like that at the making like make like. At, at, involved with us living this life, you know, and the more you kind of are with it, and the more you kind of know brothers, you the, like, you just realize like guys really laid their lives down in a lot of concrete, tangible, real ways to to persevere in this life. So that's the, that's kind of the the overall sort of um, umbrella to set the stage, the direction. One of these things that we we all um, Saint Joseph's Friary, right, um, aka the League. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we would pre- if there was a G League, we would be the G League because we have like the new guys. Yeah, we're the new guys. Um, but anyway, we. So, what does that mean for your Friday? <laughs> <laughs> what are we, CYO? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so we all take during the again we've talked about it during Lent. We all do these mission trips, and part of the mission trips for us is like formation for the postulants. So we went to different places. Each we have twelve postulants total. We had four in each trip, and there's um, and this is a very postulant experience that I think we've all experienced before in our, our lives is like, you know, um, for example, like they go to Lincoln and they're in these house with like, I, and you were there as well. Mm-hmm. Right. And I there's was. like 40 kids. You weren't, I was not there because I, um, anyway, um, <laughs> but right. Like they, they have this experience where all of a sudden, um, many of them are having an experience of like married life and a family life that they like didn't know existed and they didn't know was possible. Right. And then, like, they have to process that, right? And, and it can be a little bit, like, disorienting. And, um, and part of one of Father Andrews, uh, one of our founders, his, like, thing about the life is, like, brothers, like, you, like, you need to make this yes um, sort of, like, over, like, the best possible, like, other options, right? It's not just, like, you're saying yes to consecrated life and saying yes to this life because you didn't meet a good girl or because family life's hard or whatever. It's, like or whatever it's like you want to make this you want to make like this this yes like in face of even the best alternatives you know right that's kind of and so right yeah, and sure. so i think you know maybe you can just speak about this and it, we don't have to get it too too deeply but right isn't that like part of like so you you've been on this mission trip and now you had all this experience where there's all these people giving you attention and time and they they all like really really love you and you're having these experiences of family life and then you come back and you're in the friar and it's like like these desires and all this sort of stuff. And you kind of have to help them like navigate those waters, right? Yeah. Like I would just say that a part of the mission trip is not just when the mission actually happens, but it's actually the experience getting back Mm -hmm. and recognizing. I think if I could speak for you guys as well, that that happens pretty consistently when you go on a home visit, you're back with your family and you're back kind of in the world. You come back to the friary, you got to say yes again. And Jesus reminds us that it is like a giving up of everything and following Jesus, right? And and it's okay to feel that. But for particularly the postulants, it's 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 beautiful, but it's also tough. And to be honest, like I, it kind of caught me off guard this time. I think the, uh, this year, uh, and not in a bad way, like I'm very, uh, hopefully very attentive to the postulants, but there was a lot going on. And I think we were just like moving right into like uh, Holy Week. And I was gone a, a little bit before and, or uh, when they got home, they landed and I wasn't here. And and so when I got home, it was really beautiful just, just to listen to them because I think a lot of them had these experiences. And, and let's just throw another one out there. I mean, being on a college campus, um, a lot of them like have this experience of like, wow, like there are just a lot of beautiful girls, you know, like you're meeting them and you're like beautiful Catholic girls who are single. They just like, whoa, they kind of look at you, different. you know, like it's beautiful. And some guys were like, whoa, like that kind of moved me. They give you attention and, and, 
And so this is the place where we want to be to help guys press in. Okay, like so you you uh, you met a beautiful girl on the college campus, or you saw families and kids, and and one of the guys actually said it's not just he's like I didn't know, like this living a living this Catholic life was possible. Like Nebraska is so blessed. You have all these families. He's like, I didn't know that the faith was so important to them. Like you have all these big families, a lot of kids, they pray together. Like, you know, that we we all spent time together, um, had a fraternal day and you had all these families there. And and you have like, again, our kind of best friends as, that are really close to the friars. And you have all these kids that are like praying together before, before they go to bed without their like, you know, their mom and dad's like prompting it. You know, you have the little seven-year-old like, hey, we should pray, you know? <laughs> like, it's like really beautiful. Like, And I, we're hearing about this after because like, again, these just beautiful families. So um, this is where you want to be with the guys and and you're you're hoping guys not be afraid of it. So we're getting back, we're processing and we did a sharing of graces, right? Where you start to hear guys talk about what Jesus was doing in the experiences. But Jesus, okay, but what do you, what do you, what am I noticing about my heart? Like, wow, that was really beautiful or wow, like, can I, can I sacrifice that or give that up? Or, you know, when, you know, like I do actually really desire marriage. It's okay, bro. Like that's a, that's a starting place for Jesus to come and work. And so it's really beautiful. Like a a lot of us who live in this house, we're just like processing with the guys and it's not, we just don't have to be afraid of the, of the experience and the feelings we have. um, Cause Jesus is just kind of using them all to speak to us. And you guys have had some, you don't have to go into too many details, whatever, but you recognize that from like your earlier days, kind of some of these experiences or no? Yeah. <clears throat> I think like Father Instance mentioned, when you go home for home visit or you're just away and you're doing stuff and then there's a particular you're doing it, then you come back to the friary. Okay. I have to fall back into the rhythm of the life and I have to say no to certain things because yeah, I have to be more present or whatever it is. Um, but I think there is sometimes just this reality of, okay, I have to recommit to mm-hmm. what I first said yes to. And I don't even have to leave the Friday sometimes, <laughs> you know, yeah. like you could just just fall into a funk and, and just to kind of just making bad choices and bad choices by like maybe not pressing into prayer. I'm not talking about like stealing money from a bank, yeah. um, <laughs> although petty anyway, cash, yeah, petty no, cash. No, just <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like it's, it's just oftentimes like this place where I have to come to, OK, like what's like, Lord, what's that desire or, or like what's happening in my heart in this specific movement to not want to do something that I should be doing or, you know, whatever it is. And so. But just being not afraid to go there with the Lord and just to allow him into that place and be vulnerable before him and say, I really do prefer on a Sunday to sit down and watch NBA basketball all day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, Which is, maybe it's a little too. <laughs> too <laughs> but I can't, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and Lord, can you meet me in that? Um, and sometimes an opportunity does come up where a family will just say, hey, randomly come over. But anyway. Sorry, I'm going down, down. This, oh, bro, this. Go, go down that road. It's all right. Get it out. <laughs> and so, uh, no, but just to say, yes, the experience real where you just kind of have to recommit sometimes to things that, yeah, maybe weren't as apparent in, in the beginning, but even more so, okay, this is where the Lord desires me to be right now. So something you guys don't know, um, just on retreat, it, it's so funny you bring this up in this way. Um, we watched uh, the movie, a movie of, uh, of Gods and Men just about the Algerian martyrs, the 12, I think there are 12 of them, 12 Algerian martyrs who died. And so the guys really, it is obviously it's very something to do with fraternity, but at some point towards the end of that movie, they, um, in one of their, in their chapter, they always light a candle and then they all sit, they all sat around and made a choice to stay. Mm-hmm. And that choice was martyrdom, you know? And so, but it was a very dramatic kind of thing, but it, the candle, the, the camera was like focusing on the candle and then all each brother saying, okay, I'll stay, you know? So we're sharing graces yesterday at brunch with the, with the guys who were just on retreat about fraternity and communion. And so then we're all sitting there and I shared and bless them. And uh, one of the, one of the Pashans walked over in front of the icon at Monticello and grabbed a candle. And he said, Hey father, can we all make a decision to stay? And so each one of them went around the table and in their own way, just like, yeah, I love you guys. I'm in. Mm-hmm. Like, and it, everybody did it in their own way. It was really beautiful. Yeah. Like, but clearly like from the movie and, it, and there was a temptation to think like, oh, that's kind of cheesy, but it wasn't to them. Yeah. Like everybody's making it. And mm-hmm. I, I was just really moved by it. So it takes me back to the desert when there was the little, there was, a, there was the little mutiny about Kenny and Aaron and they kind of had, they, they, had they, they almost have, overthrow it. They almost overthrew they had, us. They had to do that back then too, where they all made a decision. Um, but at least, so kind of going back to the, the topic again, like my experience of this is like, I think there's an early time where it's like, especially like early on, maybe like you go to a wedding or something like that and being at the beautiful wedding, it kind of like, again, it kind of like, it, it really brings to the surface, like the desire for marriage or whatever. But I, I've found like definitely over time, like 
there's just a deeper like surety in this and like there it just there at at a point i think for many of us like you just like you go to a wedding and it's like my desire is just to be like the priest on the altar like i like much more than anything else and and i just like i think um in many ways as you do these like you just you get deeper rooted in de- like greater security and confidence and just like like we just like i'm 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 i've had we've all made the choice and continue to make the choice and it's like it's not just a sacrifice there's like we really love and desire this life and love and desire the the fraternity and the vocation and the consecration and in our cases like the priesthood like this is just what like a desire above everything else and and there's nothing else that really at, at this point like that's a temptation against that you know and so like you can go into these places and you just don't know necessarily experience what you do after you've been living the life for three months or something like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if, if I could just say like, I, yeah. that's why I love teaching about this life and these experiences, because it took me a while in our, again, in our own, my own journey. Like, I just, I'm so grateful that over the time in our, my own like deeper conversion that it, instead of about the sacrifice of like, okay, marriage and, and having a wife and kids, it, it became more about the Lord. Mm-hmm. You know, and just like, that's why we stay, you know, we feel the sacrifice, but you know, the gift of being 14, you know, 13, 14 years into this is that thank God that it's, it's, it's more and more about the Lord. Like I, yes, you, we can have, we can grieve a little bit, the self, the, the gift of, you know, the, the call to celibacy, like our longing for, you know, to have our own families, our own children. But what the Lord does is, I mean, he's the one that kind of captivates our hearts and it becomes about him. And so to be able to teach that to the guys, like it's okay what you're experiencing, but over time, Jesus promises that he, he intends to give himself to you and and fulfill you. And so you don't have to be afraid of your heart, Mm -hmm. you know, like he's going to be enough for you. Cause I think that's the question deep down. And maybe that's the question for all of us. Um, you know, every, every, uh, every person Mm -hmm. is that, is Jesus going to be enough for us? Right. And so as celibate men, he continues to be uh, more, more than we could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just Go had this it. experience during novitiate. <clears throat> Father Glenn was my novice master, and uh, and yeah, just novitiate and just formation has just been for our uh, evolving in our community. And um, <laughs> one of my one of my best friends, you know him, I won't say his name, uh, Father Mary, but uh, he was he was getting married, and so <laughs> novice, not knowing how these things work, I was like, hey, can I go to the wedding? It was in New Jersey. And Father Glenn was like, wait, you're going to a wedding? You know, I was like, obviously, if I can't go, I can't go. I'm asking permission. Hey, take Brother Angelo with you. Go, get out of here. <laughs> you know, and so, and it was the gift of being able to go, especially in this time of novitiate, to a buddy of mine's wedding. Um, and he, a faithful, a faithful man himself. And, um, but like, I remember just driving back because it was a great wedding. I served the mass. Uh, I think myself and Brother Angelo served. And then we celebrated at the reception. But then after just going back with Brother Angelo, like processing this, you know, and it just, I just, I still remember just like, man, like she is beautiful. That's beautiful. And like, man, but I don't know if that's it for me, you know, like, and, and just like, honestly, having a brother to be able to just to talk this out with, uh, was super helpful for me. And, um, and just kind of holding the reality of that could be me. But once again, I think the Lord's invited me to something different. Um, but re- healthily recognizing that. And being okay with like, yeah, but you know, like just, yeah, like that, that could have been me like walking down the aisle with this, uh, not with a specific person, but with, with a bride, but, but just having a brother, basically what I'm trying to say is, um, it's helpful just to be able to, to kind of go into this place, um, that you're not by yourself when you do these things. And so. Did you guys get on the dance floor? <laughs> we did actually. Of course. <clears throat> um, of course you did. Uh, <laughs> crushed it. <laughs> <Torn>. <laughs> The um, so this that, is, this is kind of, I remember that story too. But sorry, <laughs> this is kind of a long sort of lead up to where we're going because so I did right and this is kind of this like because I would say I'll have a parallel experience to this which is just different but um, where uh, so again like as I've talked about like for almost like a three week span I was constantly with people who like. I was like totally invested in and really cared about and really enjoyed being with. And so it's like this whole mission trip and you're with 20 people from the time you wake up till night. And then you go to the, the LSU mission trip and same thing. And although sometimes you may not believe it, I, I love being around people, especially people I like all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And so like, you know, we're in the airport for like 22 hours with all these people all the time. And for me, 
like with like three hours of sleep whatever like but i loved it because i'm just i love being with the people and stuff like that um and again there's like when you go into this like you really like really give yourself to them and really receive them and so there's like a really deep kind of like like relationship love bond that that happens and then those end you come back to the friary and it's like holy week and then it's like easter and it's it's all of a sudden it's um like that's all gone right and that's and that's this this experience of you have this profound experience of like communion relationship um like a, a healthy holy like intimacy communion and then all of a sudden you come back and it's like and that that whole thing is gone and and so like just kind of feeling that and when we were just on the retreat and one of the things like father gave a really beautiful like conference just about like just kind of being real like with what you're experiencing with the lord and i kind of i would say it's like it was kind of like a breakthrough grace for me of just being there before the lord and being like like right now lord i actually feel like really lonely i feel really lonely because i just had this experience of being with all these people and all that sort of stuff and now it's like it's it's like quiet and there's not the people and there's not the thing and and like that experience of just like the comparison and whatever of like the fruit of it in the subjective kind of human experience was loneliness and i think this is part of one of the things about once you've been here before and this is goes back to like an analogy that father pt shared a long time ago is i think i don't know if it was like band of brothers or some thing where it's like the new troops arrive and there's like bombs in the distance and the new guys all like duck and cover and the guys who've been there for a while like don't really move like i think if, if you've been around long enough it's like maybe if you're a new guy and you start to feel lonely you like start to panic and you know you've been around a little bit and like you might feel something like okay this, this is what i feel like it's not a big deal i don't have to overreact but um but i think then it's like i i can pay attention to okay so wh what are my and and i share this because i think um this is going to be a very kind of like concrete human experience i think people experience loneliness you know, and I think you can experience, and this is like a really true thing. You can experience uh, loneliness in crowds of people. You can experience loneliness in marriage. You can be surrounded with like kids all day and like you're constantly with people, but you're lonely because they're not peers or because um, just having this experience of like, man, I really love these. I love my teenagers. I love my kids. I love my college kids like way more than they can reciprocate. And it's like, there's a loneliness there. And so, and, or just isolation or not being chosen, whatever. I think loneliness is just a really common human experience. So then they, it's like, what do we do with that? Right. And I could feel in myself at first, like, okay, like, um, a temptation to, okay, I'm just going to like fill it by ha setting up meetings, bringing in more people. I'm going to like, in instead of just, I'm going to fill the void again with other people, uh, or I'm going to distract myself with work or whatever. And just like, and, or like all, just like feeling like okay here are, here are these ways in which uh, i can feel like a like a like a human like movement to try and like fill it to hide from it to escape it and I, the invitation from the lord right is just like okay like like here here i am lord you know and and that's when i talked with father about it. it's like yeah like the lord brings these things up so that we can bring them to him you know and so this is just like what do we do like what do we do with the loneliness what do we deal with, do with like that desire for for like deep relationship and communion um when it's not quite like satisfied and and that's <clears throat> and that's kind of what the, i think we want to talk about is i think certainly um uh it's prayer right and we really have to um believe that like the lord can fill that space and and i think this is very very true for human beings and for us is you have these experience where you let all these people in it and it expands your heart and then they're gone and it's like and i think that's like like the lord wants to fill that space right um a, a friendship i think like you talked about driving home with brother angelo it's like how that and like the healthy kind of fraternity or healthy kind of friendships i think that's like a good way to do it um i do think we can talk about it you know is um i think there is a place of mission and of and working with the poor like these are healthy things like the unhealthy ones are like panicking overreacting of filling it with okay, I'm just going to do more work. I'm going to distract myself with more entertainment. I'm going to, um, uh, I don't know. I'm just going to keep bouncing around or I think people can experience it in some places where they like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go for the counterfeit of like physical intimacy or, um, or, or so there's just, there's so many different ways in which we can try and like unhealthily, uh, respond and kind of self-medicate and impose, instead of just like, okay, like relating it to the Lord. So that's just kind of, what i wanted to talk about 
and get your guys kind of thoughts or input or guidance on it. Great. I'm just going to throw something out there. The camera kind of came up in my own prayer and I'm going to, I was going to prompt all the angels about self protection, but I actually just wrote that down. Okay, good. I know you, that's your thing. Um, so I think self protecting is this thing personally. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You like to self protect. Um, so I think this is, this is going to be just quoting John Paul II and it's something we talk about a lot. So I don't know how much we have to go deep into it, but We'd be. Sur- I think we're often surprised that that God did bring the brings these things up in our hearts, because He just kind of wants to remind us like who we are and kind of what we're made for, right? And He, again, the gift of relationships, like Father Mark Mary, you talk about your mission trip and to see the fatherhood come alive in you is like an incredible thing, and that's an absolute gift. But then the Lord uses it to kind of keep helping us grow deeper and kind of sharpening the gift of who we are in our fatherhood and all that stuff. So, so here's the thing: like when we have these. In- kind of high potency kind of intense experiences of communion relationship, especially in our own mission. And we, we can experience a kind of a, like now they're all gone and now I'm back in, I have these experiences sometimes now I'm back in my cell and I'm all kind of, I don't have these things anymore. And the Lord reminds it again, the Lord reminds me like in my human ache for intimacy, like he, he wants to remind me like, again, what I'm, what I'm, who I am and what I'm made for. Right here's John Paul II. He's going to say like, the temptation is to loneliness, but all, but the invitation is to solitude. Like man, after all is said and done, there is a place in our hearts where we're actually made for this 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 kind of um, this solitude with the Lord. This it doesn't have to be isolation and loneliness where I'm by myself, but I'm in solitude with the Lord. That like when everything earthly has has kind of has has kind of um you know maybe quieted down the lord reminds me that in this solitude with him that i made for him alone right and and again we have to enter the suffering so we're not afraid of that right where okay he's like wow like no human being can actually give me what i want yes glimpses and yes relationships parents, friendship, everything, the gift of like, those are icons of God, the way that God loves us. But, but, it, but when it all said and done, like we're going to disappoint each other or, uh, experiences are going to come to an end. Mission, mission trips can't last forever. So we, we're always kind of disappointed or like longing for more, like, oh man, like the reason Father Mark Mary, you love that. You don't want it to end because that's what heaven's going to be like, where we're going to just be able to be with people in communion all the time, first with the Lord. And then with each other, we we're made for, for fullness. But on this, we we experience like a lack here on this earth, and we often get disappointed, or you know, we we come face to face with our woundedness or weakness or limitations of others, right? So you have that as friars, or sometimes like a husband and wife, like as 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 a gift of your spouse is. There's still something like, man, like I long for more, or my kids, like I love them, but why am I? Why do I long for more? Right? Well, because there's a place that no one else can fulfill in your heart that only God can. And this is this interior solitude. It's not loneliness, it's not isolation, but it's intimacy with the Lord where we have to enter into and let go of all these other desires for other things or other people and be like, Lord, like I know that when all these things real, like are experienced the limitations and they're not giving me what I want, that I'm going to be alone with you. And I, and I can, can trust you that this place of solitude is is a place that you want to come and fulfill me and like okay like i i want you lord like you can you can give me happiness and peace like no one else can but will i take the risk to let go or experience the grief and pain of kind of making space for that you know because a lot of people don't and they just kind of go from experience to experience and and try to fill this stuff and so i'm never come face to face with my limitations and and my 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 longing and my desire but don't be afraid of that like you enter the solitude with the lord and you realize you're not alone and he actually wants to give you a taste of fulfilling you like no one else can but we have to let him i, th- I mean i hope that kind of makes sense but. yeah um I, I, as you're talking about mission trips it's just funny uh, um, oftentimes we'll get guys called the vocation office who they're one of their main reasons for discerning is I love mission trips. And I feel like the CFRs are just like one long mission trip. I was like, well, it's kind of interesting, but and it, there's a lot of dynamics there that guys are attracted to. So I just find that funny. It's a little different, but anyway, um, 
one of the things that's interesting, guys, is like I have so like self protection and med- medication down. Like so, you, you mentioned this this the reality of like we we medicate and, and we, we use all sorts of things to medicate. So we want to, um, yeah, want to not feel things, you know. So we're just really good at that. And part of the reality too is that we we become like escape artists, right, from reality. Reality is given, and in this given reality today, I feel lonely, right? And so, the the challenge, and I've said this before, the challenge is when we're when we're good at escaping everything, we never really actually get to encounter the Lord there, right? And so, the gift of, again, the the proposal would be re- grace is in reality. Like we're, I th- are we still in the Easter season when this is recorded? I think so. Yeah, like so the the risen Jesus comes into my reality. He doesn't come into my fantasies. He doesn't come into when when I get sad, when I escape and, and live in other fantasies, or I wish I was somewhere else, like talking to the postulants. We're like, well, yeah, I thought about wanting to be married when I met all these girls on mission trip, but you know, that's a fantasy. So Jesus can't meet me there. Like it's so Jesus meets me in real life. And in real life, sometimes I feel it. Sometimes I suffer, right? And so we want to make choices for reality. Obedience to reality. We've had episodes. Obedience to reality is where Jesus can come and be with me. But if I escape that all the time, it's it's really difficult for him to find me there and enter in. The the other thing is is like just so the reality of self protection. Um, I was sitting here discerning whether I should be like bold here or not, and so I'm going to say it, and then they can edit it out if, if An- they need to. Ange the ange, be bold, bro. you know. But like uh, spicy. The Sorry. culture, the culture, the challenge with the culture is we come, we live in a contraceptive culture, and so when we experience the the reality of protecting ourselves from getting hurt, it's just feeding into the contraceptive culture. Like I'm going to protect myself from what I, I appear to be threatening or what I appear to be something I don't want, right? So so pain and hurt generally are the main Or reason. loneliness. Or loneliness are, are the things that, that we, we we're, I, I get hurt and I feel pain and I feel struggles and I feel these things that I don't like and so I'm gonna protect myself because so, I don't wanna feel those ever again. The challenge is, is that we build a wall, and we've talked about this before probably, we build walls around our hearts. So this again is funny. I want to, I'm lonely so I want connection, but because I don't like getting hurt, where I don't like feeling pain, I build a wall around my heart. So like every self-sabotage in this like strange way, I want to be connected to you, but I also am afraid to be hurt by you. So I build a wall around my heart. And so we, then it's like this subtle reality of resentment that gets in because I have protection, but I want you to love me, but I'm not really letting you love me and I'm not really letting him love me. And so why is anybody loving me? Well, <laughs> mm-hmm. the challenge that my walls, I have walls around my heart. So it's, it's really quite beautiful because when you enter a space in working with someone or talking to someone and you, you, you recognize like, hey bro, like you want everybody wants to heal well that's the first thing that has to come down you have to take the risk to not protect yourself anymore you know and we've renounced things on the show before but like this is a big moment when someone can renounce the reality that i don't agree with that spirit in my life anymore of protecting myself what's what's incredibly risky and incredibly awesome is when people decide to do that they start feeling all sorts of things and they don't censor. And they and they don't censor anymore, but then they, they, they have this like, they, they want to go back to like, no, I liked it better. I'm like, no, no, you didn't. Because then you couldn't actually get what you wanted, which was communion, mm-hmm. which was connection, or which was allowing someone to come and be with me in my loneliness. You know, so it's just a strange thing. So self-protection is a real thing. We all struggle with it. I my my wall of self protection probably went down around five years ago with with a brother on retreat, which was really beautiful. And once and for all, I said, I don't want to carry around walls around my heart anymore. And so it's scary, but now loneliness I feel deeply, right? Sometimes, but the Lord can come and be with me in it. I don't have to go into other fantasies to escape that. Can I jump in before you, because it's on that? This is for the listener. This is going to sound like funny. For you guys, you're going to have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, you, I mean, <laughs> Father PT might. There is there is like a um, a popular song that's like an anthem of like self-protection. And it like, breaks my heart. I used it in a talk in um, yes. at LSU, okay. and um, all of the students like laughed when I started using it, and all of the postulants had no idea what I was <laughs> talking about. Um, but there's there's the song lyrics are something like this, and again, it's going to be funny to the people. Is it's like uh, I can buy myself flowers, I can write my name in the sand, something like I can I can whatever I can hold my own hand. I can, it's this whole list of like these things that I'm going to, I'm going to do for myself. Right. I can like, buy myself flowers. I can write my name in the sand. I can like, like dance by myself, whatever. And it's just like, it's this, it's, it's a, it's a popular song. It's just like this woman. I think her background is that she was really hurt, but like, but my, my fatherly heart to that, like is like viscerally torn. Mm. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like that, that's, that's not, no, no, no. Like that can't be, 
that can't be how we like how we respond right because that's this okay this I, I i tried i got hurt and now i'm going to build up all these walls and i'm going to create this world i'm going to live this life where it's just it's just like me and me and you know okay like and it just doesn't to take the song lyrics like buying yourself flowers and writing your name in the sand like it just it doesn't do it you know it's like not it doesn't it's, it's not enough and i just think like if i if i was a dad and like I heard my daughter like sing that song. I would be like on a plane first thing to wherever she was and I would be buying every flower I could find and I would be telling her like there's no sound I like more in the world than the sound of your name and I would like take her dancing until she like like her feet were all like tired and like you know what I mean like I would like I would for like to a father's heart and I think to the father's heart like it's like no 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 mm-hmm. like that's just like that's that's like let me do that for you. You know, let me love you like that. And so I think this is... It's beautiful. Yeah. I, and I think this is like with the Lord, particularly for those of us who have been hurt and who have like kind of resolved to do it on our own and feel that sort of like loneliness, whatever. Like just I, I deeply <laughs> believe that that the Lord like wants to like to get into those places and to redeem those places and to heal those places. But also we have to kind of give it permission to like mm-hmm. take the walls down. So. And I would tell him like officially in prayer, Lord, I don't want to do it by myself anymore. Like to, to counteract any sort yeah. of like, like voice that that's said, okay, well, I'm not, well, I don't need you guys. Right. I yeah. don't need you anymore. So I don't need you, Lord. I don't need anybody else around me. And so I would like officially like say with my yeah. voice, Lord, I need you and I need the people around you want me to love. And that can like lift anything that. And you better believe there's people like, okay, I tried Lord and that you didn't do what I thought you were going to do. And like, I'm done. Totally. Yeah. So that's more hurt and then it just compounds, right? And the walls go down one day, but then we get scared and they go up the next. So probably just something you just want to say yeah. at the beginning of every day. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Father PK. <laughs> no worries. It's okay. Um, I was just on retreat this past weekend with the teens. Um, anyway, it's just a beautiful time to be with them. And I gave a talk specifically not about loneliness, but just, just sometimes we wind up in places and we don't recognize how we got there, right? Um, so we could fill in loneliness in, in the situation. And the question I proposed to them is, how did I wind up here? Like, who was I listening to? Because um, mm-hmm. typically, sometimes, like, you just wind up in a place. You're just like, like, yeah, like circumstances, and like, how did I end up here? And you know, like the things we often talk about in the podcast is, okay, the father's voice has a certain sound, the evil one's voice has another sound, which is kind of funny. As an aside, somebody later pulled me aside, like, is the devil talking to me? It's like, well, okay, no, <laughs> no like, <laughs> not in that way. But anyway. <clears throat> But to, to simply sometimes in that place of loneliness and in that place of just like things are heavy and no one else knows or no one else loves me or whatever it is, once again, that that lie that we may have listened to or may be listening to, just to ask simply in that moment, is this the Father's voice for me right now? And I think this is a little bit what you're talking about, Father Mary. Um, because the truth is, it's it's not. And I'm sorry, Father Andrew, if it was distracting. I was I flipping know. through the Gospels as you were talking. And so Jesus, before he goes, um, I think it's after he heals Simon Peter's mother. He's in he's in uh, Judea. And it says here in the Gospel of Luke, And when it was day, he departed and went into a lonely place. Why? Like, why did he go alone? And so this, this is a solitude as opposed to loneliness. So he could pray. So it could be alone with his father. So he could talk to him about, hey, dad, this is how it's going. I just came out of the wilderness and it's crazy. But like, hey, thanks be to God, these things are, are going on. And then people came and sought him out. And he said, okay, we must go on to other villages. You fast forward to the transfiguration. And now about eight days after this, these sayings, he took with him Peter, John, and James and went up to a mountain to pray, um, to be alone with them. And it's beautiful because I think if we encounter Jesus in our loneliness, if we're open and honest to him and say, okay, Lord, here are the walls that I've put up and I'm done with them because I'm tired of feeling lonely. I'm tired of these things. And my heart isn't created for this. He's able to come in. He's able to show us how to pray and how to be in that loneliness where, okay, let me take you aside and let me show you how to be alone with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then I think those lonely, dark, just traumatic places sometimes that we keep ourselves can be transformed into a transfiguration where we're able to communicate with him and hear the father's voice. You are my beloved son or daughter with whom I'm well pleased. And we can just understand how the spirit is going to clothe us in a way that just self, not self protects us. Sorry. That's the word we're trying to avoid here, (laughs) but protects us from the self protection. Hmm. So we can be totally open to what God is saying to us. 
because I think it's a part of just our hearts. Once again, we want to experience community because that's what our hearts are created for. Um, in heaven, we will have the fullness of community. community. And I think I mentioned this before, but uh, Pope Benedict spoke it, about it briefly, just where um, the logical conclusion of hell is basically self-isolation mm -hmm. and just being by yourself forever. Logical conclusion of heaven is, is community. And so once again, who is that voice that's drawing me to the place of, of I'm by myself, nobody else understands me, nobody else cares about me, I am alone in the situation. And really wrestling and dancing with that, specifically saying that, okay, this can't be the Father's plan for me, or this there has to be something more available to me. We'll just open up these beautiful pockets of the Lord just meeting us where we are, but even more so just saying that that's a lie from the evil one and that I am with you and I love you. And I will show you how to talk to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit in this specific way. Um, so just to be open and honest with the Lord in that specific place. Go ahead. No, you, I was just going to add something really quickly. I was recently talking to one of the postulants and it was funny, like, this is how melancholics do it. But like he he was like owning this just reality of just like, Father, I just feel like spiritually I'm just melancholic and sad. And I think that's, there's saints like that, right? So I just feel like, yeah, I just kind of one of those saints. I was like, that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Right. <laughs> And so I like, I, in a funny way, but I was just like, bro, you just agreed with and owned stuff that's not even, Jesus never talked about, <laughs> right? And so I was just like, that's not your identity. Yeah, humanly, are you a bit melancholic? Absolutely. But the more you agree with like, maybe that's kind of what my prayer is supposed to be like. And I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of angsty and sad in prayer. I'm like, well, that's not the Lord's will for you. <laughs> Where's that in the gospel? Actually? I know, but, and I, he knew I was kidding with him and stuff, but like, uh, no, point, I know, but I'm agreeing with that. Yeah, I, I was agreeing. Yeah, with no, you. totally. But the, the point was, is that like, we got to be careful that we don't take on these other identities that like, well, maybe I'm just a loner or maybe that, that life, my life is just, is difficult. So I'm just going to be sad all the time. Now we, we face those things all the time. No question. But I think to your point, father PT, like we want to lean into the reality that like Jesus wants to come and he wants to transform my life mm -hmm. into communion, into relationship. Does that mean I'm going to be happy every day? Probably not, but it's different. Right. And I'm just always hesitant. I'm just like, we don't want to own things that aren't true. We don't want to own things that, that, well, I guess this is just me. This is just my personality or this is just my life. I, I think you just got to be really careful. Like we do feel loneliness, but what does Jesus do about it? I do experience anxiety and depression, but what does Jesus do about it? That is not my identity. Is it something that I might suffer consistently? Maybe. But what does the reason Jesus say about that? Right? So we just got to be very careful. And I just laughed. I'm like, we got to be careful not to like take on stuff that that is not true. And that is not our identity. Our identity is this experience. I mean, a son and daughter in communion with him and others. And therefore I can face anything. That doesn't mean life is easy, but I do it as in, in a different identity rather than like agreeing with all this silly stuff sometimes. You're a good formator, Ange. He, he told me that story last night when it happened. He's like, that's one of the stupid things. <laughs> <laughs> because again, we identify and we say stuff and he, like, you're just a good father, Ange, just to be like, just be like, no, actually, Jesus in nowhere, no way, no place in the gospel says that we have to identify with loneliness or sadness, right? Mm -hmm. It might be real, but he, that's what he wants to come save us from. And if, this maybe is a, a little transition into some of the other things that are listed there, but but what's beautiful about the the kind of the medicine for our loneliness is that um, yes, communion with the Lord, communion with our brothers, and we something we've talked about, but it's but it's actually an invitation to get outside of ourselves, and because sometimes we can, and this is one of the big blind spots, and I'm willing to admit this kind of in a public space, very public space. But one of the blind spots of living in a formation house is that we can, we, we can, the temptation is to sit around and think about ourselves a lot, right? Cause we're, we're, we're examining our hearts, our humanity. Okay. Like here's a human journey. Here's a spiritual journey. And you're talking to a lot of people about your interior experience. Like it, it's a part of the formation. And I, I would say maybe even just growing into Christian life, you're, you're becoming more self-aware, right? Mm -hmm. But we can think about ourselves a lot, but it's actually not the end. We, we don't want to get stuck in ourselves. Like, okay, I'm, I'm lonely and I'm trying to figure it out. And I try to like fix it. And so we can get stuck in ourselves a lot. One of the big medicines brothers is, is that when we recognize there's a loneliness is actually to be invited outside of ourselves to actually make life, not actually about me right now, but I'm going to, to, you know, again, obedience is beautiful. Obedience to reality. If you're a mom or a dad, like I'm going to be invited out to like really be present to my kids right now when in my loneliness or, or like go on a date night with your spouse or, 
like for us, a big part of this is being obedient to the Take your friend to the hospital in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. No, but it's like you'd be yeah. generous yeah. and you're going to be blessed by it, right? You're going to be, you're going to be brought out of yourself for, for us every, every, every Friday, at least there's a, there's a real concrete invitation to, to work with the poor or those who are struggling. And so like when the doorbell rings, I'm immediately challenged to break outside of my loneliness or my isolation to be present as a brother and a father to those around me. Guys, that, that's, you fake it till you make it. You might not feel it, but it actually is a medicine for us, right? So working with the poor or being like just being generous with your time um, is actually can really be really helpful. But that movement outside of yourself, I think, is actually very necessary to when you experience loneliness um, to to get outside yourself and give your give, make a gift of yourself, and then the loneliness starts to dissipate. Mm-hmm. And and right part of the getting out of yourself is how you bring it to the Lord, right? Uh, not just keep it to yourself. But I think, because I, I hesitated, because the last thing I want is for like a listener or somebody to be like, oh, poor, poor celibates, you know, or poor celibate, he's all like alone, you know what I mean? Because that's like, that's not what, what we're going for. But I think that there is a, there's a solitude, if you will, which it can go either way. It can be a, it can be a solitude or a loneliness. That's, that is, um, part of the fruit of when you like of fatherhood and motherhood mm-hmm. like when you love fatherly and motherly because i think right again like um all fathers and mothers who like ha- are going to have this experience again of like of loving another like to it's like you just love your children so much more than they're able to like reciprocate and there is something about that but also you love them at the service of ultimately like giving them away right and so they're all like all, the, all these these parents or these moms or whatever, like you hear them talk about, like, I just want you to never grow old or whatever. And then you take them to college and then you have the whole, like you, you walk them down the aisle and they get married and it's like, okay, like I, this, these people, this person who I like loved as much as anything, like I give them away. Right. And so I think it's, it's part, it's such a common part of the human experience is mm-hmm. I'm going to love, I'm going to love deeply, but at the state, like one of the the risks I'm going to take is that I'm going to love and give this person away. Like I'm not good on this and at least on this earth, you know, and so all of us are going to have to learn to to turn this solitude into like a solitude with the Lord and to learn how to like take it to him and to navigate it. Because I think um, this is something that was like shared with me in early age. It's something that we have to share with all our guys. Like, uh, atten- like anyone can feel loneliness. Anyone can feel it. And actually, in some ways, I do think that if you love well, um, like Our Lady, right? Like Our Lady loved Jesus and loved him so much. And there's time where like St. Joseph died and Jesus is out with everyone else and she's she was in solitude. She was in solitude, right? Like this is just part of the human experience, I think. Um, if you don't, and so the temptation then is like, do I distract? Do I sort of get so self-focused and kind of like live life like woe is me, like an Eeyore type of thing? Or do I like bring it to the Lord? And this is where I think um, kind of bringing from last episode, just again, like the paschalness of things, just that if we like, just we 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 bring it to the lord and the light of the resurrection and the promise that like i'm with you always and that this like the lord will will come and the lord will fill and that the lord does satisfy like all of that is is just true and so we um when we can feel this like we don't freak out we don't panic um we don't self-medicate we don't self-protect we don't escape we don't distract but we just with confidence like sit with it, keep it before the Lord and trust that, um, like he will, he will fill us. Right. So I think that's, um, again, just, uh, I do think that it's a pretty universal human experience and it doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. Um, but I think it's, it's at the service of ultimately like learning how to have solitude and deep intimacy with the most Holy Trinity and that that's a real thing. Amen. All right. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. Um, Cool. So we can pray and then we have a series of shout outs. Go for it. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. <coughs> Holy Trinity, we adore you, we praise you, we love you. Thank you for just the gift of your life that overflows in us. Thank you for reminding us who we are and, and what we're made for. Uh, just intimacy with you. We We do ask you to continue to remind us Um, that in this place of solitude that we're made for you and to be fulfilled by you and help us to receive deeply this gift, but also receive uh, the healing you want to bring us um, in our loneliness through the gift of prayer, through the gift of our brothers and sisters, our families. 
Um, but just remind us, Lord, that um, that we are made for this communion and this intimacy with you and ultimately in heaven with each other. We ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, so you already did Loris. I already did Loris. Do you want to? MRU, Mike Rudin University. Our, my best friend actually is Mike Rudin. <laughs> but we <laughs> thought he made this mug, which was I thought was funny. Um, but he actually didn't. We don't really know who made it, but whoever made this. You have to hold it kind of more in front of your face oh, because we're sorry. using a, a closer camera these days. So Mike Rudin <laughs> University. Awesome. Awesome. I think that, so, so the backstory again is one of their friends Put, made that mug and sent it to us without telling them without telling them and so i wrote to them saying like by the way we forgot to use the mug sorry but it's like hilarious and they're like we have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> but this is my humor right here this is i forgot who it was who did it this is 20 out of 10 <laughs> the, the execution the idea the, the whole secrecy, thing the, all of that. the initiative i just think that is the most creative funny thing <laughs> the, the choice of the picture so if you want to i don't know we, don't, we can't really trust everyone's judgment. But I, I kind of want to say, like, if you want to do that to one of your friends and send it to us, we'd do it. But we don't know if that would embarrass Mike is a stud and can handle, can it. handle it. You know what I mean? Um, shout outs to, okay, LSU, Alter Server Zach. Zach was like the number, all like the postulants when they got back, they're all talking about how much they like Zach. So nice job, Zach. All the postulants really like you. Um, freshman Chris and volleyball Chris. Ali, uh, Haley, Kathleen, the stud, uh, Jacob George from a long family of studs, and Mindy. You guys got it, bro. I did, PT my, Laura, I did my Laura at the beginning. PT always has things. What's your thank you? Oh, okay, no matter. Right. You had, you don't want to say hi to anybody? No, I mean it's because you're just stay at home dad. <laughs> I was on community retreat. I was with him the past week, previous week before that. I was at home, brother Maximilian. <laughs> what I say hi to him? I live with him. <laughs> Exactly. Why would I hug somebody if I see him all the time? Whoa. All right. Mm. See everybody. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love. That life is short. That all will be well.